to the second in our webinar series. Uh, this month we are going to focus on geographic extensions and the relevance of city okay. TLDs. Uh, my name is Matt Buckland uh, with Lex Energy Limited. I'd like to introduce Daniel Greenberg, uh, director and founder of Lex Energy Limited. Daniel founded Lex Energy in 2007 to provide trademark holders with efficient and cost-effective tools to manage their online intellectual property. He has over 15 years of experience in IP law in the UK and South Africa as a solicitor and associate. His professional writings have been published in the Journal of Intellectual Property Law and Practice, and he co-authored a leading cyber law textbook in South Africa. Uh, Daniel is an admitted South African attorney and admitted solicitor of England and Wales, both non-practicing. He's fluent in English and Africans, conversational in German, and has an elementary understanding of Flemish. Uh, here's Daniel. Great. Uh, th thanks a lot, uh, Matt. Um, thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, as, as mentioned, uh, this is our second webinar. Um, our webinar series is really intended to um, educate and update trademark owners their attorneys and others involved in brand protection, domain names, marketing, and um, technology, since domain names are becoming an integral part of our daily lives uh, through the launch of these new GTLDs. And understanding the developments in the industry enables you to make proactive and informed decisions on how to protect your mark or that of your clients. Um, it can be confusing at times, so if you have in, any questions, uh, please insert them into the chat box in the WebEx, and uh, we would uh, answer that. Um, I now will hand it back to Matt, who will introduce Neil, um, who's our guest speaker for this uh, webinar. Great. Thanks, Daniel. And before I introduce Neil, I just want to take a moment to let everyone on the line know that we have, uh, we're using Lexenergy.media. Um, we registered that a few weeks ago, and we are going to publish today's webinar there. We have uh, our last month's webinar, uh, New Domain Names, Familiar Risks, posted there, as well as Daniel's recent appearance on the Domain Name Wire podcast, uh, where he discussed uh, what are the crazy country code domain names, which fits very nicely in with today's discussion. So um, if you have a chance, if you listen to podcasts, please take a moment and subscribe to the uh, Domain Name Wire podcast, or you can download it at uh, lexsynergy.media. And I'd like to introduce Neil Dundas, the Executive Director of the ZA uh, Central Registry, better known as Zacker, the organization responsible for, among others, the South African COSA domain name space. Zacker has also been appointed by the African Union Commission as the Registry Operator for .Africa, the new top-level domain name. Neil heads up the registry project team, which is responsible for preparing and submitting the .Africa TLD application to uh, ICANN in consultation with the steering committee. His team is also responsible for the development and implementation of framework and operational infrastructure for the launch and administration of the .Africa TLD. Neil is a qualified attorney and previous partner with the law firm of Bowman Gilfillan Incorporated. Uh, through his work as an intellectual property attorney working closely with the South African domain name and internet communities, he's developed invaluable expertise in the legal, policy, and business aspects related to the domain name environment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Neil. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me uh, to your webinar. Great. Thanks, Neil. Okay. So Neil, um, just to um, start off the um, the, the discussion, um, I thought it would be appropriate um, to have someone on board that um, has applied for a TLD um, being .joburg, Durban, Cape Town, and, and .africa. Um, so I was just wondering if you could just um, you know expand on that N now that um, those three TLDs have launched with .africa, soon to be launched. Um, if you can just um, you know, discuss, you know, why were there such few applicants from Africa and the only three uh, city TLDs were from South Africa, um, as well as whether you think there will be additional um, applications from um, applicants in Africa in the next round of the TLDs. 
And also, um, I know there, there are lots of questions uh, all up front, but uh, what impact do you think Dot Africa will have on existing country um, codes in Africa? Um, bearing in mind, it obviously covers the whole region. Thanks, Daniel. Um, I think it's probably no surprise that South Africa, being the most advanced economy on the continent, uh, was responsible for the bulk of the UKB application. Even though collectively, I think there were 17 in total, uh, probably 16 in, a, in, in true effect, uh, that came from the African continent, which was relatively low. I think uh, it's no surprise that the, the, the majority of these came from, from South Africa were based around South African uh, legal entities. Um, uh, I, I think we're all very disappointed in the number that came from Africa as a whole. Um, but I think the reasons for this uh, are multifaceted. The one is certainly the, the expense around the TLD applications. I think it proved a little bit uh, expensive and, and out of reach for a lot of potential uh, TLD applicants on the African continent, certainly uh, 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 out of reach for a lot of the CCTLD administrators. And then obviously the, the uh, relatively high service levels accompanying the application process and the administration of TLDs um, has meant that uh, applicants and administrators need to put in place uh, a pretty extensive mechanism, service levels and, uh, and redundancy uh, processes to ensure that they're able to sustainably administer these name spaces according to the service levels set by ICANN. Um, certainly from our perspective, having just under a million domain names under administration in, in .za, it was a steep learning curve for us. So, uh, you know, we, we I wouldn't say we bit off a bit more than we could <laughs> we could afford, but uh, but certainly we were surprised at the extent uh, of the um, of the service levels expected from top level domain administrators, um, and I think a lot of the applicants from not just in Africa um, in terms of the brand applicants, but around the world were also surprised by this ever evolving service level. Um, and uh, legal requirements that were imposed on us from from ICANN. But and um, you know the, the upside is that we were able to roll with the punches, and I think we've been able to do the continent proud in terms of what we've achieved with the three cities, Dot Cape Town, Joburg, and Durban, and of course um, Dot Africa, which we hope to launch sometime next year. I think uh, we've put together a very um, uh, a good application, and I, and I believe that the launches of these three top-level domains um, have, have have gone relatively smoothly. I, I think we, we we would be bet we would be happy with a bit of uh, better statistics around the launch process, but um, we can't really complain. I think we've seen sustainable growth day on day, and uh, we're pretty happy with where we are today. And we're certainly looking forward to launching Dot Africa. As to do I expect any other African um, cities or applicants to apply in the next round of applications? I, I certainly do. I think uh, a large portion of the African market was caught a little bit off guard with the um, this last application round. Um, uh, I certainly, from our perspective, we never originally intended to apply for the three cities. Uh, we certainly stuck our hand up for the .dot Africa top level domain because we we wanted to ensure that it was administered. Um, in Africa by an African technology provider and a service provider. And in that process, we came to hear of what was happening internationally in terms of city top-level domains. And um, our, uh, our business strategy sort of evolved as we became aware of what was happening out there. So someone such as ourselves that was, who was very involved in the, in the uh, ICANN process, we were caught a little bit off guard by the extent and the, um, the excitement around the TLDs and we really woke up very late in the process to, to apply for our four top-level domains. I'm sure the same um, challenges were faced by many other applicants, and perhaps they couldn't make the last application round, but, um, but we'll certainly be looking at future application rounds. I think also in terms of city TLD specific, I, I do believe that uh, a lot will be learned of the launch of uh, Joburg, uh, Cape Town, and Durban. I think a lot of uh, African major cities would be looking at how we've launched those namespaces and how much traction they've obtained locally and internationally. Uh, also, um, African cities will be looking at how uh, other international cities, such as Sydney and London, New York City, Paris, and Berlin, have uh, have been adopting and, and, and making use of their top-level domains. and 
um, are leading up to the next application we know I think they'll take a lot of um, positives from the experiences of these other major cities and, and I think this would convince them to, to maybe consider applying for their own city top level domains in the next round. Certainly we're going to try and be there to assist them wherever we can for, based on our experience of this uh, first application round. Um, like I said, it was a steep learning curve, but I think we can share that knowledge and that ex experience that we had with uh, our counterparts all throughout Africa, and we certainly will be reaching out to them to ensure that if they are interested, that we'll be there as an African registry provider to assist them in applying for and launching those TLDs. Um, but I think it's looking very positive, and uh, we'll have to see how that, how that pans out in the next year or two. Um, and then the last question or the, the final question you had was what is the impact, the likely impact of something like Africa on uh, existing CCTLDs in Africa? I think I would be lying if I said there wasn't going to be an impact. I think there is certainly going to be an impact uh, with Dot Africa on African CCTLDs, but I certainly hope it will be a positive and a constructive impact on the CCTLDs. And um, I think the way we've approached Dot Africa as sort of a collaborative um, uh, campaign together with uh, the governments through the African Union Commission, individual African governments, the technical communities around Africa, even CCTLD participants in the Dot Africa campaign. Because you must remember when we when we applied for the AUC's endorsement, we had to indicate a widespread CCTLD support of our bid. And we obviously obtained this from all corners of the African continent when we applied for Dot Africa. So I think CCTLDs foresaw some form of um, of impact on their uh, on their business, and uh, they realised that potentially Dot Africa was inevitable, and uh, uh, they wanted to participate in the process in a constructive way rather than wishing it away. And I think that's that's where we got a lot of support from African CCTLDs, and in doing so, we've ensured that. Part of the Dot Africa campaign when it launches that the welfare and development of African CCTLDs is top priority. We've actually built in a mechanism in our project plan where um, a portion of the uh, surplus revenues of the Dot Africa namespace uh, gets reinvested into African CCTLD development. And obviously, we will do this by means of uh, trying to ensure adoption of uh, interna international standard re uh, technology, possibly of getting a policy standardization out there, certainly of skills development and enterprise development. Those type of initiatives um, would be spearheaded by the Dot Africa project through the foundation that would be established uh, around the TLD. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot that CCTLDs can gain from this. And um, um, adding on to that, you, you said uh, ho hopefully that uh, this will have a, a positive impact on the CCTLD registries in that they may step up their game um, so that they can become more competitive. But at, at the same time with .Africa's launch, you know, uh, a lot of our clients are waiting for it, especially from a brand protection perspective. A lot of trademark owners are, are keen to secure their brand. You mentioned that it would be launched next year. Do you have a rough indication of um, timelines? Um, Daniel, I think you're right. I think Dot Africa is going to showcase Africa and I think it's going to create a platform for the CCTLDs to step up. Um, they're going to need to do some work from their side, but, but certainly I think the spotlight will be on Africa. If all goes according to plan and Dot Africa um, does launch to the success that you believe it will and I believe it will. Um, in terms of when we expect it to launch, um, that, as anyone will know who's following this process, is a little bit of an open question. Um, there is a hearing set down for this independent review process in December between the uh, DCA, Dot Connect Africa, and ICANN uh, concerning the, um, their bid for Dot Africa. Uh, that has unfortunately had the effect of delaying our application, our uh, not just our application, our contracted uh, process. Um, and we hope to see a decision from the RP panel in early 2015, hopefully in, in January, as early as January. And uh, we would be roughly five days away from launch once we get the green light from ICANN. That's, so that's, we're looking at a minimum period of probably first end of the first quarter 2015 if we get the green light in early January. Okay, all right, great. Um, we, we look forward to that. 
Um, and, and, and thanks a lot for um, addressing a lot of those uh, issues. And uh, we'll expand on those uh, during the course of this webinar. Um, but I know your, your, your time is limited, so if anyone does have any questions, they can type it into the chat box. We can pass it on to Neil. Alternatively, we can keep them and pass them on to him, and, and you can always uh, email us, and we can add it to Xenergy.media uh, so people can get the answers that they're searching for. Th thanks a lot. Also, um, um, at the end of the webinar, Neil, um, sorry, uh, Matt will give out his email address, and you can also drop him a mail uh, with any questions you may have. Great. Well, th thanks a lot, Neil. We appreciate the time. We know you, you're busy, and uh, thanks a lot for their contribution. Uh, it's only a pleasure. Thanks for having me uh, to your webinar, uh, Daniel and Matt. Uh, really appreciate it. Yes, pleasure. thank you very much, Neil. We really do appreciate it. And uh, now we'll be uh, continuing with the webinar, and Daniel will start us up again. Daniel? Great. Thanks a lot, Matt. So just carrying on from where um, Neil left off, I think it's important to, to, to set the scene and start by saying that we all know that the Internet is borderless, allowing us to communicate with ease anywhere in the world making it a smaller place with apps and services such as Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Snapchat, and Pinterest. Um, smartphones, especially in Africa, have um, made the Internet mobile, and this mobility has transformed our phones into essential devices used for GPS, directions, reviews, news, and instant messaging. And with these powerful devices in our hands, the Internet has become localized allowing us to search for a restaurant near our location via services such as Yelp or, or Google, as you can see from the current slide that has localized search engines. So you can search for specific services within your country, such as Google New Zealand, Google Brazil, or France. And a local search means that you can find the baker or hardware store around the corner or connect with other businesses and people in your vicinity. And geographic TLDs, such as .kiwi, .scot, .tata, as well as city TLDs such as London, Joburg, .vegas, and .berlin, localized domain names allowing businesses and individuals to use specific domain names relevant to their city or area. So, for instance, a pub in London may want yourlocal.london or a tour operator in Cape Town may want visit.capetown. It gives those who have lost out on the .com or the country extension the opportunity to identify themselves with a localized TLD, getting the domain name that they want, um, and in some cases getting a valuable generic domain name. And these domain names over time will be picked up by search engines such as Google, who's incidentally an applicant for a few um, TLDs, and other services ranking them higher due to their relevance and uh, possibly the extension themselves. So by way of example, when you search if you're searching for a sushi restaurant in New York, um, you would enter sushi restaurant New York um, in Google or a popular search engine. So the natural point from, from there is why not register sushi restaurant.nyc? So taking that further, as an attorney, I, I do appreciate the positive side of things that these new GTLDs have given us but I tend to focus on the risk areas, and GOTLDs and city TLDs are no different. This means that trademark owners need to pay close, pay, pay close attention to these types of infringements um, on the particular uh, TLDs, as they can create risk areas and result in more infringements. So before I get into those particular aspects, I think it's very important um, to set out the different trademark systems that are covered um, worldwide. For instance, the Madrid Protocol, the Community Trademark, or CTM, uh, ORP, a repo, Benelux. You don't have to know the, the details of these specific um, trademark um, application vehicles, but rather that they do exist in that they cover a number of jurisdictions. And for the purposes of this presentation, I'll refer to a community trademark. It's just one that affects a lot of new TLDs that have recently launched. And a community trademark basically covers all 
EU member states. So one application would give you trademark protection in each of those countries. So it has quite a vast scope of protection. So looking at the world map, I'll now highlight the challenges facing trademark owners. So I've registered a community trademark, as I've said, which is a trademark that covers the whole of the European Union. Say, for example, I've registered Hercules 10 years ago, 10 years ago covering catering services, and I've built my business over the years so that um, I've become well established in this region for catering services. Now, Dot London launches, and I found out that an operator of a hot dog stand in London has registered Hercules Dot London. Uh, then conduct an informal investigation, and I find out that he's been operating under that name for the past 15 years, five years longer than my business. He operates the business or the company under the name Hercules Limited. So what are my options? It's very difficult to, cover, uh, to recover this domain name via the UDRP, which is a dispute resolution service applicable to top-level domains. And then also... The reason for that is because you have to show that the other party has no legitimate interest in the domain name and that it was registered and used in bad faith. So in this particular case, um, I, was just, I just received a notice that maybe some of you are struggling to see the PowerPoint presentation. So I'm just going to reset that. I apologize for that. It should be reconnecting. Okay, great. So I hope you can see the presentation right now. Great. Okay, so we back up. So basically, to recover this particular um, domain name would be very difficult because you would have to prove that the registrant has no legitimate interest in the domain name, which he registered and used in bad faith. And since, since on the face of it, um, it doesn't appear to, to be an infringement because he has a legitimate interest and prior rights. So the UDRP is not an option, and local court action is not a, um, a, a solution. Um, so the only conclusion that can be drawn is that I've lost out. Now, if you expand this situation, you'll see that local businesses may have prior rights in the various jurisdictions. So as you can see, all the city TLDs that have been launched. And they could technically register certain domain names without falling foul of any particular rules. So as you can see, a number of CCTLDs, I'm sorry, of GeoTLDs ha have been launched over the uh, last few months. So what's very important to remember is that people identify with places rather than industries or generic names. So personal identity empowers people and gives them recognition of belonging, often associated with a pride of, of some sort or a form of patriotism, and people would tend to search locally for certain services. So trademark owners are in a predicament. So we then look and say, well, what have trademark owners done? So I decided to look at a couple of TLDs and see, you know, if geo TLDs and city TLDs are so important, surely they should have secured them. But then I searched for yahoo.joburg and I found that it wasn't registered by Yahoo. So that is clearly uh, an infringement. I then checked coke.berlin and, uh, that's obviously not Coca-Cola, so that's an infringement. I then checked WhatsApp.nyc, also an infringement. Samsung.tokyo, an infringement. Louis Vuitton, surprisingly, also an infringement. So clearly, trademark owners haven't really got their act together yet. So the lesson that should be learned that if a trademark is worthy of protection, it's also worthy of a domain name registration. A trademark that covers a country that has a geo TLD associated with that country should require a corresponding registration. Variations are not necessary, but an identical match should be registered. Because a lot of clients say to us, you know, it's impossible, they can't register everything, and we say, we agree, but the identical match is essential. 
because there's a good chance that someone would search your brand locally or within a specific TLD. So the majority of the domain names that I've listed here that are infringements cost about $25 to, re $25 to register. And it's about 3000 to 5000 to recover if they can be recovered via the various dispute resolution procedures. So if you take that amount, $5,000 would keep yahoo.joburg registered for 200 years. And that could also translate into savings um, for the trademark owner so that they can register other domain names. And what's also important to remember is that ignoring the risk is not a solution. A proactive approach is recommended. A proactive approach, and I'll take this from a UK perspective, as you can see in this particular slide, a trademark application conservatively can cost you about £1,070. Registering the identical matches in .uk, .co.uk, .london, .scot, Wales, and Cymru, which is uh, Wales and Welsh, will cost you approximately £100. Now, if you had to file an ADR or a UDRP conservatively to recover all those TLDs, all those dom domain names registered in those TLDs, it will cost you £13,600, which would keep your portfolio, that amount would keep your portfolio renewed for about 136 years. So I cannot stress enough that you cannot register every conceivable variation of your mark as a domain name, but identical matches covering the jurisdictions of your trademark are essential. So the question is, why spend thousands of pounds or dollars filing trademarks across the world and neglect to register matching domain names? It seems like a, a simple question to answer, yet if it was, those examples of infringements I mentioned would not exist. If you now extend this example to a US trademark or a community trademark, that would compel the trademark owner to register, obviously, a .us domain name, which is a CCTLD, as well as .nyc, .vegas, and any other city or GOTLD that specifically targets America. So a CTM registration covering the European Union would obviously require a lot more um, registrations, the reason being obviously covers more countries and cities, but nevertheless it will provide for a reasonable defensive strategy and save in recovery costs in the long term. It will also provide the marketing teams with an option of localizing the mark by using the particular localized um, TLD. Just some stats to look at uh, very briefly. You can see Dot .Berlin heads the pack with about 154,000, .NYC with 61,000, uh, dot London 51,000 and Tokyo and Bayern. What's interesting is dot NYC is a restricted TLD in that you need a local address within New York to register one, but still it has higher numbers than dot London, so there's obviously a demand there. It's still early stages now, but these TLDs will gain in popularity over the next uh, few years. And as they go and gain momentum, the value will increase. So it's very important to be in, um, or as a trademark owner, to secure your domain names at this early stage. The approach should also be adopted for, um, for city TLDs, should also be adopted for geo TLDs. Now the difference between a city TLD and a geo TLD is that a geo TLD can cover a region such as .Bayern, which is a province in Germany, or BZH, which covers the Brittany region in France, and .eus, which targets the Basque-speaking community. Then you get .kiwi, which is a term used for a New Zealander and may have relevance to owners of New Zealand or Australian trademarks. And then .africa, which uh, Neil spoke about, which hopefully will launch next year, covering a continent. So these are uh, very relevant um, TLDs. So the strategy is straightforward. Firstly, identify the trademarks you want to protect in the new GTLD program. Set out their jurisdictions that they cover so you can determine the relevant geo and city TLDs that you want to focus on. Then register them at the appropriate time. And this, obviously, the strategy assumes that you've secured the appropriate country code, such as .co.za for South Africa, or um, .us for the United States. 
and um, the GTL, uh, GTLDs, which are Comnet, Org, Info, and, and others. So it's very important to at least have this target list so that you can secure them as they launch. It's preferable to secure them during the sunrise. The sunrise is the priority period reserved for trademark owners, um, which is uh, very important to um, secure at that stage. And then the land rush, and that's really where the domain names are available to all, but at a premium. So that is the presentation in a nutshell. I know we went through it quite quickly, but the aim of it is to really set the scene for GEO and City TLDs to make sure that trademark owners are taking a practical approach uh, where possible and securing them to avoid the infringements that uh, were identified in the presentation. So um, I'd like to uh, thank you for, for listening, and um, I'll now hand it back to Matt. Great. Thanks, Daniel. If anyone has any uh, questions, um, please feel free to send them up to the chat right now. Um, if you're having a problem connecting to the chat or if you'd just like to think for a few more minutes about uh, your question, uh, please feel free to email me directly. Uh, that's matt, M-A-T-T, dot buckland, B-U-C-K-L-A-N-D, at lexsynergy.com. And uh, I will get your message through to, as always, the appropriate party. Um, thanks again to everyone who attended, and we will have the webinar published on lexenergy.media shortly, and uh, we'll also be making our next uh, webinar announcements, hopefully within the next week. So again, thank you, and have a good day, evening, or morning. Take care.